Hey, hey, assistant coach, how are you guys doing? It's me, Johnny Sports, and welcome back to the Academy. Nice to have you all here. Yesterday was Biscuit's birthday, so tell him happy birthday in the comments down below, guys. That'd be much appreciated. Um, he is not editing today's video, though. I will have to say that in advance because he's probably drunk off his head and he's still sleeping at this point when I'm posting this video later at night. So technically, he's probably asleep for around 24 hours at least by now. Uh, but yeah, tell him happy birthday in the comments down below. In today's episode, guys, we are back at the academy and we are currently ninth in the league. We are doing such a decent job right now, considering that this is our first season in the Prem. Spurs is still leading the line somehow with only zero, with only zero losses, only zero they they just don't have any losses jenny don't say only chelsea also haven't lost any games also haven't lost only games anyways today we are looking at ourselves trying to climb up the league table 22 points on ourselves and it is going to be quite interesting to see how we are going to be navigating this episode specifically we are getting close to the january transfer window which is where i want to get by the end of this episode and hopefully we can start getting a lot of offers for our youngsters that we are looking to sell or loan out because if you look at our team again we have too many players in the team too many talents that are being wasted in the reserves and that is obviously not beneficial we want to bring in more money to possibly go for the likes of newman in the upcoming transfer windows you guys have left comments like this one from jack perfect who says would love to see newman back brilliant player and could become the comeback kid keep up the good work so yes i am open to bring in back newman uh, i should go into the transfer hub here and then you guys can actually see his stats if i'm actually capable to navigate through fifa you can tell here that newman is currently at braga 76 rated only 19 years old never really got his chance could come back into the team and someone like chetin could also come back into the team in the future he was the Ersoy replacement technically we had Urso in that camp position as a Turkish player, and he was insane. I'm hoping that Chetin also grows and does well on his journey over there at Brentford. And uh, just generally hoping that these two guys can be incredible players for us in the future. Because obviously, if we do spend money on the transfer market, we're only able to spend money on players that once actually played for us, came through our youth academy, and then left the squad for some money. So, what is happening with the team itself? 89 rated Harvey, 88 rated Ferrara, 83 rated Clark. And the rest of the team is still working towards the 80s. We even have Marquez now going up to a 77. Lots of good things happening to the academy. And if you guys are enjoying these episodes, please smash. Smash that like button that'd be much appreciated guys if you are enjoying it make sure to support the channel as you always do and leave your comments down below there's another comment coming in from carlos calderon who says hey jenny i think the defending is different from online playing to offline playing in career mode i think that if you wait in position to make the tackle it's better than pushing out your players constantly chasing your rivals gotta be patient to make the tackles if you put pressure on players out of position you're always going to be conceding too much space he is completely right with that. I do know that that is the way to play, but I do get impatient. And that's a big downside to my gameplay. I am fully aware of it, but it is an issue that I am not able to fix at the moment. But hopefully I can in the future. Still no five star, five star scouts available for purchase. We are willing to spend the four million on him whenever he does come around. Harvey currently third in the top scoring list. Joint first position, actually, alongside Lukaku and Angel Correa, who is playing for Leicester City. Fanakin behind us in that fourth position. Quite a surprise, but I'm excited to dive right into the gameplay today. Hopefully, defensively, we can be a bit more stable. They have some players who are down on stamina, which could be very good for us. We seem to be quite fresh here going into the game against West Ham. Let's take them on. They are right around us in a league table. This is a massive matchup for us. And here it goes. Our stadium is filled with fans that have high expectations. And it is going into a match 
in snowy weather. We haven't had that in a long time. I don't think we've ever had that, actually. So this excites me a lot going into this game. Let's see if these young players can deal with these conditions. West Ham obviously being a very, very strong opponent. Also, guys, in the comments down below, let me know who you think, who do you think has been the best January transfer in this transfer window? Who is, in your opinion, the team that made the best deals? Let me know in the comments down below. I'm very interested in your thoughts. Obviously, as a Liverpool fan, I'm very excited about the Luis Diaz signing. Um, but you then look at the likes of Spurs, for example, who have let go of Dele Ali finally, who has joined Everton, I believe. Let's see if he does well there. I'd be shocked if he does, honestly. I just, I don't know. I personally don't really like Dele Ali, but at the same time, Frank Lampard is the perfect coach for him because Dele Ali was supposed to be the next Frank Lampard, the next goal-scoring English midfielder, but then... Yeah, he kind of messed up his career. I guess he didn't really have the right attitude when it comes to football. And Frank Lampard, as maybe an idol of him, could be the guy to get the best out of him uh, in the future. And I do think he joined Crystal Palace, uh, Everton, right? Not Crystal Palace or something like that. Anyways, I think Everton also brought in Van der Beek, which, I mean, they're bringing in two really, really interesting players into, the, into their team. I really hope I'm not wrong on this Dele Alli transfer. He joined Everton, right? I think he did. If he didn't, I'm sorry for talking nonsense. Uh, but then, of course, you have Spurs coming in with the likes of Kulusevski. Ah, and also Ben Tankur, both from Juventus. Very interesting transfer window. Lots of things happened that I probably didn't even mention just now. So please let me know. Bruno Guimaraes, for example, to Newcastle. Newcastle signing a bunch of players. Missing out on Etiquette, I think that guy's name is. The striker. A young striker from the French Divi French League who is doing really well over there. Uh, who apparently turned down Newcastle in the end. Lots and lots of deals happening. What are your thoughts? Let me know. Here goes Harvey. Bringing it to our main man here. We have a great pass into Harvey. The setup. It was quality. Connor Harvey, as always. He's the man. Come on. He's now the top scorer in the league. The teammates are celebrating the most successful goal scorer in the Premier League right alongside them. The leading figure, the captain of this squad gets it done against West Ham. Well done, pal. 12 goals in 16 matches. Come on. Here they come, West Ham, with some strong play. And there is the tackle, the block, I should say. Perez, his size is quite intimidating. But then there's a shot that gets deflected and falls right into the feet of the attacker. Mate, you could not be luckier if you tried. Hala scores the goal. <sighs> that's, that's a freaking joke, honestly. I can't believe we just conceded that. West Ham gets so lucky there, man. Honestly, look at that. We have the block coming in perfectly fine from Leon, and it just bounces straight into him. 1-1. I don't think they deserve it, but hey, it is what it is. We got to come back from this again. Also, where are the floodlights, man? Turn them on. This game is too dark. Uh-oh. Babu, huge. Absolutely massive from Babu there. Great defending. I mean, it's it sucks that we didn't get it. Ooh, whoa, what the hell was that? It sucks that we didn't get a clean sheet. Uh, we already missing out on it. As you guys know, I did have a no clean sheet disease for years. Woo! And now it seems like I am very keen on conceding again. Oh, that's class. Babu out of position and Leon perfectly positions. Horrible pass to get out of the defense. And that seemed to be a thing that I've been struggling with quite a bit lately. Where I do get the ball in and around the box and then I just can't get it out of it. And now West Ham have another chance on the corner. If we clear this, we go into half time at level with West Ham, and we're going to clear it there. Whew. Mate, this team wants it. They want the three points desperately. I do too, though. Why does West Ham look like PSG to me? Like, it looks like I'm playing against PSG for some reason, and it looks like it might be intimidating our players here. We're just not close enough to our opponents at all times to get these tackles in. And when we do get close like this, we have to get it in order to start off our counterattacks. Duque, I need you to make... Oh, referee. Come on. Disgusting behavior right there. 
Babu, have you ever scored a long shot? Let's see. No, he hasn't. Harvey, though, has a couple of defenders right on his toes. Perez does pick it up. Warren. Oh, no. I wanted to slide tackle. He just kicked it out. Warren with some space. Too much space. Maybe. Nah. Nah. We still aren't there yet when it comes to finesse shots, man. We are far away from scoring them from outside the box. Now West Ham again. This is the position where you guys are telling me to stay back and wait, right? And <sighs> they still found a way through. Oh, West Ham now pushing forward. I'm bringing back my CDM. I'm bringing back my CDM and Leon picks it up. Well done. Here goes Warren. I need runners. I need runners. Duque, thank you. Duque now. Might have to wait for Warren to come back. Warren. That is absolutely stunning football for Warren. Oh my God. That is the best goal we have scored this season. Warren goes on a run. The man with the crown on his neck has just scored the best goal of the season. Let's go. Unreal. The timing on both of those skill moves were impeccable. Please, let's see that replay again. Look at that. Bang. Slight tackles. Nowhere near the ball. Second player losing it. And the third not able to block it. We have just scored the best goal with Warren. Unbelievable, lads. We might actually be able to beat this West Ham squad. Yes. What a goal. That's me. That has to... What? How did... How's that not mine? Oh, come on. I'm missing the ball by inches, man. Perez. Oh, no. Please don't. Please don't. Keep it. Let's go. All right. We only have seven minutes to survive here. We can do this, guys. It's going to be high pressure from West Ham, but we have plenty of agile players that are going to be able to deal with this pressure. Ferrara now pushing into the box. Oh, hold on. He has Warren right next to him. Warren doing a madness again. I love the, uh, the improvements of Warren, by the way. He has become such a good player. His dribbling is unreal now. His finishing is quality. I got to say, Warren might just be one of the ones that I enjoy the most now in terms of gameplay. And here goes the pass from Harvey. Ferrara, Warren, what a pass. We have to score that. Mate, he just lobs it over the defender in one of the most beautiful ways you can do it. And it's a great save. All right, we're going to put... I think Ferrara needs to be on these, man. He has a much better corner. Here comes our centre-backs. Babu... Berardi, Leon, Duque, Duque inside, beautiful, over to Ferrara, Ferrara with the finesse, and it doesn't work out, we're gonna go for Harvey, Warren is, is hitting it, I believe, oh, that's all Harvey, Harvey all day, he has to score that though, can't hit it straight onto the keeper like that, that's a disgrace, let's try that again, Harvey! Downwards header misses the target and the referee blows the whistle. West Ham is getting kicked out of our stadium after the goal of the season from Warren has completed an incredible result for us. Three points for Usoy and his boys. What a game this has been, lads. I did not expect that. Albert Warren, clearly the man of the match for us. Oh, mate. What a game. Now we are in that eighth position. Liverpool is actually below us. No, they're above us now. There you go. So Liverpool back into the top six. We're up against Leeds United after that great result. And there was a comment here from Prantville Place who says, Hey, Johnny, not a lot of people know this, but when you look at the players at the Youth Academy, don't look out for the value. Look, at the, look out for the wages. You rejected one player who had a wage of 1K with 100K value. He had potential to be special, but was lower rated at the wrong position. So from now on, I guess we're going to be looking at wages as well, because that seems to be something very important. All these players don't have good wages. So Salvatore Monti here, 1.1K in wages. He says he should be a potential to be special player. So I'm going to sign him. Let's see if it's actually true. I do. 1.8 mil. Francesco Franco. That clearly shows we have a massive player in our hands. Come on then, Italy. Six foot four tall. Please be a center back. I would love to have you in a squad, pal. And this man is not worth anything. So we have found ourselves an Italian wonder kid. Could this be our Maldini? Let's see. What is he rated? He comes in at a CDM position. 65 rated. 68 physicality, 65 defending. 
dribbling 61, passing 58. Let me move my camera so you guys can actually see this guy's face as well. But generally speaking, this is a very, very solid player who has the ability to easily play anywhere midfield, but also could easily be dropped down to center back due to his size. Why are all these CDMs that we're getting massive players? I mean, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and promote him to the senior squad. Check out which positions he does well in. Now, this guy, you said in the comments, right? 1.1K he had. This guy does not look like he's better in any other position. Uh, I got to be honest with you, mate. He has OK dribbling, I guess. 45. His physicality is good. His pace is OK. His shooting is awful. What, where the hell would you put this guy into? I honestly don't think he's actually high rated in a different spot. You know what? I'm going to use the cheat engine and find out which position he would be highest rated in. Just so we can like kind of um, see if what was said in the comments is true. Because I do know myself, normally players with high wages are high rated. But 1k, I don't think that is the play. So here you go. Monty at center back is a 47 rated player. So that's a plus three on his rating. That's still not good enough. Definitely not potential to be special or anything like that in my eyes, at least. But it's good to kind of look into these types of situations and try and find the truth. I appreciate the comment. He's not completely wrong. Some players are actually high wages, low value, and they are actually insane. That is true because we have had multiple players in the past, but we had them in the wrong position. We put them into the right position. They jumped up by plus 10. That is still very much possible. Let's take a look into this youngster that we have just brought into the team. So 65 rated as a CDM, has a plus one on him already, gets a plus two, so he would be 67 rated at center back. CDM is the same thing. Cam, right wing, left wing, nothing changes. Would be higher rated as a full back as well, which is quite interesting to see. I would like to see him as a center mid real quick. Okay, so center mid, he gets a massive downgrade. Interesting. So I guess we will go ahead and put him into that center back position. Is that, is that that's the place where he got the biggest boost, right? So that was him going up to a 67. I mean, I will take it. He could be our Maldini. I'm not against it. But obviously, since his rating isn't necessarily that high, that would mean we would have to loan this kid out if we do get the chance to do so. So just like some of the other players that we have in the team, I'm not against it. He does have great stats, though, for, for CDM as well. I really like his stats for CDM, but I think for CDM, we might be covered by now. Let's check our options. So CDM, we have Perez and Moretti, obviously, uh, in the starting lineup. Then we have Villa, who's a great option, and Nicholas as well as a more offensive option there. Uh, for center back, we have Moros, who's 68 rated, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, I think we will take him at center back. He can go straight into the starting lineup of the reserves team. Going to be quick simming this game against Leeds United. We're going to be playing away from home. I mean, I don't necessarily know what to expect. I do think our form should help us here. So what's it going to be? It's going to be a 2-2 draw. Duque scores once. Ferrara scores once. Santi Mina scores twice for Leeds United. I think that's a Spanish striker, isn't he? he? Didn't he used to play at like Valencia or something? Good result for Leeds United, I guess, considering that we are higher up in the league table. That puts us now into what position? Are we still in the top 10? Just barely. West Ham is still pushing us there. Manchester City coming up next. Well, that is a big game. We have an offer for Walker, finally. No, no talent in him, sadly. We're going to go ahead and accept that one. So finally, some offers coming in for our players. We are taking on one of the strongest teams in FIFA 22. It is a rainy day at our home ground as we step up against Manchester City, my friends. This will show us what kind of quality our team now has in it. Are we able to compete with the Kevin De Bruyne's or is there still a long way to go? Obviously, City coming in with a very, very strong lineup. Let's take a look at it real quick for you guys to see how things are looking for both teams. We will go right in here. I think that is where we can see it. Yes. So we move over to City. Phil Foden, 92 rated at this stage. Rodrigo from Real Madrid playing alongside them. Gabriel Jesus up top. Two Brazilians in the attack. Bernardo Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, Rodri, Gunter, Koundé, Ruben Dias, 
Uh, Sergio Roberto, odd transfer, Ederson, and then obviously some great players on the bench. Pedro Porro should be playing right back. I don't know why he isn't. But Sterling, Laporte, I mean, just look at that team, man. This is going to be such a hard one. If I can get a draw out of this game, I'll be happy. Ferrara, Harvey, Warren. Warren, that is incredible dribbling. I love it. Harvey goes for the first shot of the game. I wanted to test the goalkeeper. Phil Foden now on the counter for City. Incredible dribbling. That momentum shift from him is something I just can't keep up with. Here's Man City now pushing forward. I'm pushing defenders out of position. Leon not able to keep up with the pace of KDB. That's something new. KDB with the pace. Ferrara picks it up straight away. We move forward now. There is some space to run into for Ferrara. This could be a huge counter-attack for our team. If we make the right decision to play it into Warren, who then scores. Warren is on fire, mate. He is not stopping scoring anytime soon. And I don't know what he's up to right there, but we will take it. Warren is on fire. The counter-attack of dreams. Man City falling asleep at the back. Kunde and Ruben Dias nowhere to be seen. Look at that from Warren. This is his episode, isn't it? Oh my God, referee. What the hell, man? Oh yes! Red card! Phil Foden, get out of here! You might be 92 rated and the highest rated player on the pitch, but that doesn't give you the right to slight tackle Bobble from behind. Get out of the stadium, pal. Leave it immediately. 1-0 up. Man City down to 10 men. Is this a historic opportunity for us to beat one of the strongest teams, if not the strongest team we have played against so far in our career? Ursoy and his boys might have a big chance here. Ah, come on. I had that. Thank God he played that pass there. Kick it away. What? Oh, my. Mate. I was... <laughs> I thought he was about to head that straight into the back of the net, mate. What the hell happened there? Taking my sweet time with attacking the ball here. Oh, lads, this is bad. This is really bad. KDB, Bernardo Silva, KDB. And there it is. Even 10 men Manchester City is not going to give up that easily. <sighs> I think that's Rodrigo, isn't it? Great goal. I got to admit, that's a quality finish. And I don't know what De Bruyne did there, but... He ruined us. And Berardi let Rodrigo go for one split second. And he just pushed inside, created space for himself. <sighs> Clark can't react quick enough. 1-1. One, one. Well, this is going to be some game. Can we beat the 10-man City? Duque has some space to run into. Will he get that one ahead of Ruben Dias? Yes, he can. Duque. Ah, the strength is, of course, lackluster in that case. Oh, hold on. Mate. What the hell was that? Perez, easy, right? Yes, Perez. Harvey, space. Ah, uh, just use your right foot for once. You have a five-star weak foot, man. Smack it with the outside of your right foot. Great steal. Pereira, I see you. Over to Warren. Warren waiting for the right moment. Ferrara. Ferrara. Stop. Cuts inside. Warren, again. Ah. It wasn't meant to be, or is it? No, it's not. It's just not. It's just not. Hold on. We still have it. We still have it under control. Ref, you can't blow the whistle there. The issue is, even if we are up by one player, I still can't throw my entire team into the attack because as soon as I do, as soon as I push forward with like the fullbacks and stuff, there's too much space for this Manchester City attack to just play their tiki-taka. And that is a big issue for me. Here we go. Double teaming him. And that's the way to get the ball, I thought at least. And it bounces straight back into them. City starts off with the first chance of the second half. Babu, that's a huge tackle. Ferrara is open. Babu, you got. No freaking way he saves that. You have to be kidding. What a tackle from Babu, by the way. What? How did he save that? Ederson, get out of here, bro. Ooh, what a freaking ball in behind. Berardi, just cover the backside. Come on. Come on, Berardi. Stop Bernardo from pulling this off, please. That's a great pass inside. KDB again inside. They have too many options. And that is Bianchi with 
A life-saving tackle right there. 72 minutes in, guys. We got to make some changes. Warren is working really hard, but it's obviously time to take him off. Um, I think I'll bring on Nkosi and I'll bring in some defensive improvements. I I'll go for Villa for Moretti. For the first time ever, I think. I'm subbing off Moretti. I'm going for two tall CDMs to control the midfield. Yes, big steal by Perez. Love that. We're putting nice pressure on him. Look at that. Marquez and Nkosi now. Nkosi. Far post. Maybe. Maybe there's a chance. Yes, there is a chance. Ferrara scores a header. It's something he never does. Ferrara. 2-1 against Manchester City. We might pick up the three points. What an episode this is, mate. Incredible scenes. As Nkosi comes on as a sub. Received the pass for Marquez, if I'm not mistaken. Is that an own goal? Hold up. Was that an own goal? I need to see that again. Ferrara goes for it. It's an own goal by Gunter. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, what a mistake. How the hell did he do that? Was it an own goal? No, it actually counts as Ferrara's. Why? Hold on a second. That for sure came off Gunter. I'm pretty confident from that replay just now. Look at that. It does come off Gunter, no? Let's look, let's look at it again from here. It comes off of him. 100%. It goes off of Ferrara onto the head of Gunter, and then it goes into the back of the net. I'll take it. It counts for Ferrara then. Thanks very much, EA. Yes. Come on, Bianchi. Marquez. What a ball. Oh my god, mate. That was such an incredible pass. Harvey fighting for this. Five minutes to go. Can we hold on to this lead right here, boys? What the hell was that? What, what am I even looking at? Mate, that was one of the most unrealistic passes I've ever seen. EA's cheating, I swear. We're going to have to cover these lanes. We're going to have to cover these lanes. Oh, no, there's two against 2v1. Babu and the boys colliding, but it's working out just fine. No, it's not. It's not, Keeper. Kick it out. Let's go. Win it, Nkosi. Thank you. No, no, no. Not there. Not there. Few minutes left. Just one minute left, actually. Leon against Gabriel Jesus. Yes. We push him off the pitch. And the ref blows the whistle. The academy at home is an incredible force to be reckoned with. Ursoy now can add a win over Guardiola to his career winnings. What a moment for the academy. Yes, they were down to 10 men, but you can't you can't underestimate this City team, man. Gianmarco Ferrara, incredible game. He pulls it off in the end. And Kossi, great substitute, big impact player there with the assist. With that win in the bag, now we're up against um, Blackburn in the cup. And I am seeing Harvey up to an 89. Was that Did that happen before already or is that new? I think it might be new. Nonetheless, I'm just going to quickly double check on our players because it is going to be quite important to make sure that the highest rated players in our team are still very much happy with their contracts. And that seems to be what's happening right here. Again, I need to list a bunch of players onto the transfer market. I've done so. We're just not getting any offers for them, which is a shame. But the, the um, development of Warren has been incredible. I might have to deal with his stamina a bit more. 72 stamina. He is working so hard for the team constantly. Uh, despite having low defensive work rates, he's down there defending, uh, which is quite helpful, actually. So I don't want to change anything there. He has been class in that camp spot. It's him and Ferrara who are leading the line right now for today's episode. We're going to dive into the game against Blackburn here, expecting an easy win. Our team should be able to smash sides like these. Whew, turns out to be a tough game in the end. Javi, Duque and Ferrara. Babu gets injured. Don't like that at all. Hold on a second. What kind of injury is it? Our big center back who started that incredible counter-attack might be gone for... Ah, oh, that's pain. And it's absolute pain. Two months. Torn calf muscle. Yep. Our season has just ended. Yep. Nice. Great. That's it. That is it, boys. Babu is out. Um, I guess we'll have to place Villa in there. Villa goes into center back now. 
Yeah, I think that's going to be the replacement. Babu is out. And then the Italian lad, Franco, goes onto the bench now. That's going to be the setup for us. Oh, boy. I don't know how to feel about that one. Whew. Villa, you can do this, right? You can do this. Six foot six. Last time I played him there, I wasn't necessarily happy. So I'm hoping this is going to work out for us. Youth player unsettled, Leonardo Lorai. Hold on. Who are you? Leonardo Lorai. There he is. He's our left back, 67 rated. 80 to 94, 94 potential. Yeah, makes sense that he's unsettled. I completely understand. The same goes for Norton, who will probably be unsettled very soon, and for Dupe as well. All those players, again, will be put onto the transfer market for sale or for loans, depending on their potential. But yeah, we got to get something out of the, all these youngsters that we have, man. Again, look at this. 16-year-olds, like all these players need to be on the transfer list. We have Demir out on loan already. Villa obviously stays. Mai's on a transfer list. We were looking to sell him for some decent money back. Franco, I'm willing to loan out. Freeze is on it. The goalkeeper's on it. Palacios is on it. Like nearly everyone is transfer listed right now. Uh, Leonardo though, I am going to go ahead and put onto the loan list because I think he has potential to be special. And whoa. Look at Ganis, bro. 76 rated. Well, that is a jump of a rating. And he is a potential to be special player. Did not see that coming, my friends. He is coming for Clark. That's quite interesting to see. Hans in here again. Someone that I'm willing to let go. Was very good at the beginning, but sadly never really grew. So that's a big shame. And then, of course, this guy right here. We're going to put onto the transfer list as well. Or actually, is that going to be a loan? Hold on. Yeah, that's going to be a loan. That's going to be a loan. I'll, I'll fix that in a second. But now we're up against Arsenal, who are currently 12th in the league. I want to get to the January transfer window in today's episode. So this is going to be another simulation. Can Villa do the job at center back? He would technically be higher rated. Oh, well, a clean sheet without Babu, Galeano, Marquez, Bianchi, and Ferrara. Very odd goal scorers there. But it all worked out. 58% possession. Arsenal might must be in a very, very bad spot. Who do they have? Yeah, that's an interesting lineup. It's not that great, to be honest with you. But at least in FIFA, they managed to get Cabot Lewin. Well done. So put me into the January transfer window, Chief. And let's see what we have going on. So Kovalchuk is gone. Youth Scout report once again coming in for all those other players who are highly talented. And talking about that, we probably have to jump in there and see if there is a five-star, five-star scout available now, finally. I'm still waiting for that one to come through. Still hasn't happened. Extremely frustrating. They should be coming around more often, especially if you are a Premier League side. You should be able to sign them quite quickly. But as I mentioned, lots of players onto transfer list. If we get enough money, if we can make it happen, I'll get Newman back this season. But if we can't, well, it is what it is. We'll have to see what we do moving forward. But generally speaking, guys, this has been a very, very fun episode for me to record. I had a great time. And when it comes to individual stats this season, you can see Harvey with 14 and 4, Ferrara with 8 and 8. Incredible. The impact that this man from San Marino has. Duque with the 8 and 2. Warren now picking up pace, 4 and 7. And then Babu sadly injured. But it looks like Villa might be able to replace him in that centre-back spot in a very, very good way. And uh, that makes me very happy. And you know what? I think I'm going to change Villa to a centre-back. But if needed, I can still sub him in at the CDM position. So I'll go ahead and do this because then we'll actually have a very, very good backup coming into that centre-back position who would be 75 rated, which is the same rating as Leon. So technically, they both are fighting for that starting lineup spot. Maybe Villa needs to be the guy in a starting lineup anytime soon. When Babu comes back, he can fight for that spot. Now that he's lost the CDM position to Perez, that could be the position where he can come back into the squad again. Obviously, Leon being a free agent, Villa being a player from the academy, he would be preferred in the lineup. Even though I got to admit, I am quite happy with Leon at centre-back alongside Babu. So, yeah, decisions to be made. And now we're in the transfer window. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Had a great time scoring the best goal of this season so far. And excited to see what our team can still pull off. Seventh in the league. The Academy wants to fight for the European spots. I can't believe this is happening. Have a great day. Take care and peace.